Hey guys, Mitch here with the Audio Dabble YouTube channel and today I'm going to take a look at an app called Auditor. It's by Living Memory Software. They're the ones that brought us the amazing layer synthesizer. So let's uh, dive in. Alright, so this is Auditor. So what Auditor is, is a, it's kind of just a audio editor that you can do multiple layers, you can fade things. And, and so I'm just going to go over come on, some of my favorite features of it and some use cases. I'm not going to go over the whole app um, because this is why inside of the files app, if you have downloaded the app, if you go to my iPad, click on Auditor, they have a whole menu, our, our whole uh, PDF, and it's really, really good quality. So if there's anything in there specific that you're looking for, you know, it is very well done. You have, um, yeah, just... 43 pages of 41 pages of this and it's uh, really well thought out so if there's anything you're looking for specifically you know look in there if there's anything below that you want me to cover in you know some little tidbit quick tip kind of videos that I don't cover in this video then leave them in the description or not in the description I leave stuff in the description you leave stuff in the comments so let's uh, get into Auditor and so when you open up Auditor it brings you up to the files menu you have Auditor over here to the side which indicates that it is in Auditor and not in the browser because when you're in the browser it shows browse so there's one indication that you're there the second indication is down I have this little icon down here at the bottom and you can preview each kick and so if you want to open up a kick then I don't want to rename it I just want to open it I'm going to turn off the little icon and I'm going to click it and it will open up the kick and there's the kick and this is the interface. It's really nice and clean interface. I like it and I really love that this little icon up at the top, this little help circle thing brings you to the page and it shows you kind of a quick on-screen thing and if you ever forget where the PDF menu, uh, manual is, it tells you right up here at the top. So that's good and handy. Um, let me close that out. So I don't really want to mess with a kick today. I want to fool around with just um, show you what you can do, a few features that I really like. So across the top, you have a menu icon here, ripple edit. You can, um, when you are importing an AIFF file it will attempt to already place the markers it has some more global settings that you can get to but this ripple effect is uh, ripple edit is really really cool this would be really good for podcasters or people who do voiceovers on their videos and they maybe have long periods of pauses and things like that and they want to be able to condense all of that stuff down I will show you how that works in just a minute but that turning that ripple edit on when you delete a section, it just collapses everything down instead of just leaving it way over here in the void where the rest of your stuff's over here. So it just collapses everything down, which is really, really cool and handy. You have your I.O., which I'm using audio, um, I connect audio for my audio, and I'm going to be bringing in some uh, piano. Um, you have some loop tools if you had something selected. Here you have your import. You can import from files or music library so you can import other things um, but some of my favorite features so I've already got my IO selected to 5 and 6 is where and then so that's the piano part here so I'm going to record in a couple chords and I got it recorded to a new layer but I don't need a new layer because there is no layers right now so I just click the record button Oops, that's a bad chord Okay, so now we have some of this stuff. And say, I was like, you know, I really don't like that one chord that I did. So I can just move this playhead right here, split it playhead. And you notice snapping is on, and so it kind of, it'll snap to like zero crossing and things like that. And so split it playhead. And now if I have this selected and I delete, you'll notice that 
everything stayed where it was at it's just deleted that one section but if we go back to undo we click on the ripple edit now whenever I delete this boom shifts everything if I want everything to start at the beginning boom starts at the beginning so that's really really cool really really fun um, what else um, Oh, I can change if I, if you click this, click and hold the ruler icon here. You can change it to samples if you're working in samples, if you're working in minutes and seconds, or if you're working in a certain tempo. You know, you can change that there. It can also detect the tempo if you want it to. Um, if you have a certain groove that you maybe played a couple bars on your guitar and you didn't know what it was, you know, you can have it kind of detect and figure out where the tempo is based on what you have selected, which is really, really cool. And so, um, i trying to use the mouse to show you, but I've been having mouse problems. It's not it's not iOS, it's, I think it's my mouse. I have problems with it on my Mac as well. But, so let's split it playhead here. Let's go over here and split it playhead. Split it playhead, split it playhead. So now we have some, you know, things going on. And so Ripple Edit is still on. So if I wanted to select, now I will say, see how the clear, I click clear selection, but it's still kind of active. You know, there's definitely multiple layers of different selections. And so if you have, you know, multiple um, layers, you know, you may want to click that you know several times to make sure you don't have anything else um, on there so say I wanted to move this there well ripple edit allows you to just fluidly move it but what if I wanted to copy and paste so there's two different kinds of pastes which I really like I can paste it um, but because ripple edit was um, on why did it do it like that let me see there we go I guess I don't know that was kind of a fluke um, but you see how the it's got these crosshairs here and so it's trying to do some cross fades inside of it which I don't want but if I wanted to insert something into that I could paste in and it's going to kind of split that up and paste it right in the middle of whatever that file is so that's really really good if you have some other things you kind of paste and two that's really good and and click more and get to more tools but maybe there's one down here that I want always up on the top so another feature I like about this is kind of a customization so if I click and hold kind of up at the top then I click on something say I didn't want to paste in two I wanted to do just regular paste up there that could work and so maybe it's like you know I don't know if I'll ever loop into playhead but I do want um, to be able to quickly add some silence somewhere. So there you go. And so now that's like that. If I click, I have this select, I click silence, and it's going to si Oh, wait. It just silenced all of those, but that's what I pasted. Why did it do that? Well, that's because it uses audio, the same audio buffer for recorded audio that, you know, has been pasted in to kind of save on resources. But if I want to do something specific to audio that I have pasted in that has got shared um, buffer, then I can go down here and I can click on this thing called Make Unique. And what that's going to do, that's going to allow me to silence that one and have the others not be affected. Whereas here, if I normalize this one, it's going to normalize both because those two are still sharing that audio buffer. So I kind of like that feature that it does save on resources but just be aware of just be aware of that and so maybe I wanted to um, reverse it so now that is reversed and be this see ripple edit is not on and so now here's another cool part so let's play this I have no idea what it's gonna sound like so that actually sounds kind of cool but since ripple edit is not on when I when I go in and start dragging it's crossfading which is kind of cool 
and so you can get some nice smooth transitions between different um, audio parts and so now if I play that um, let's say I really like that part so I can so if I want to say I want to I have that and I kinda wanna bounce that out and have its own little audio file well if I click and hold click and hold all these different parts it will select them and now what I can do is bounce and it bounced that selection way over there which is not what I wanted so let's undo that because I forgot to um, click selection to region so you select the file and then you selection to region and that puts this blue box around it and now if I hit bounce it bounced that section down and if we want to we can delete all these regions up here and you have that or if I just wanted to go ahead and delete everything up here it will delete the whole track and I can drag that over there and now I can play and if I wanted to loop it will loop okay, so that's kinda cool so let's see if it can find the BPM here guess the BPM from selection probably 16 that's no, 218 so it's probably not that so guess from selection let's change that down to and I don't know why my iPad does that when I have a Bluetooth mouse sometimes it forgets that it has has a keyboard that you can type on and so good thing I have another keyboard here so 109 is pretty good so now I have a loop that has a tempo and you know it's kinda kinda cool other than that you know just being able to split Extra, you can extract the channels if you wanted to. So if you wanted to get a stereo file, you could extract those out. And so now you have two different ones, bounce left, bounce right, over here at the side. And now I can sum these guys up to the center. And now they should be playing not in stereo, but you know, two different mono tracks like that. <clears throat> That's always helpful if you want to sum something down, if you record it in stereo and you just want one. <clears throat> one side or the other. Um, I'm kind of looking and seeing. So a few things for the developer here is audio unit effects. If I could add in audio unit effects and then apply that to a track or a layer and then bounce that down with that tail and all that stuff that would be amazing number two point is when I'm recording say I have this in but I want to play a part over top of it or maybe I wanted to loop this and then record in you know a longer section but be in time with what I have recorded here not necessarily on the you know grid I'm not wanting you know tempo sync and all that stuff but if I just wanted to record while I played that I don't feel like I can. Now if you can, leave a link in the description and let me know how. But when I hit record, if I've got this playing on a loop, as soon as I hit record it goes away. And so I'd like to hear I'd like to have a little play button here. So and maybe a play button and a count in. That way I could, you know, hit record and get ready and then play something on top and then it just add, you know, record to a new layer. Um, that would be really really fantastic for being able to lay down some quick ideas in an app that I'm not having to it's not a doll it's an audio editor and I just want to be able to just multi-track some you know sync up some multi track that would be kinda cool um, you know if you could add some time stretching and stuff like that in too that would uh, be great it would put it on par I think with uh, Adobe Audition this could be the Adobe Audition for the iPad and there's a lot of people that you know oh I don't want to spend the money on Adobe Audition but this has everything that that can do with all my AUV3 effects apps and everything else it would be really really fantastic um, the slicing is really cool I do have a video where I cover that completely I will leave a link in the description in the up here and and in the description but um, 
yeah, that is probably just my favorite feature is just being able to, you know, bring some stuff in and edit, move things around. Really good for voiceovers if you do videos and you have a voiceover and you won't got to cut it down to a certain length. Um, that's that's where the uh, minutes and seconds is good at. So if you know that at in your video at one minute something happens, you know, you could add a marker here at one minute. Um, name the marker whatever you like smash um, rename marker to smash and now you have a thing on the screen okay well I know that there needs to be a smash right there and so insert your smash and so that's that's a really really fun really awesome feature to be able to have that and um, you kind of use this as your timeline to record things and your video um, I don't think I showed you anything about exporting, which I don't know why, but if you click on, you know, if you did all your stuff and you are happy with how everything sounds, everything's lining up to the to the grid or to the timeline that you want or to the frames, you know, sample frames and all this stuff, then, you know, go over here to the save option and you can save it as a project. Hey, so editing the video and I realized that that little piano part that I had recorded inside the video wasn't there and I was like well crap it does not auto save so make sure that save your project or whatever that if you just close out the app then it it's gone it's gone 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 so it does not auto save so make sure you do save whatever it is that you are working on please because it does not auto save I lost that little piano part and I was gonna kinda use that as the outro music but I guess it's just gonna it's not there which will save it as a project, keeping everything. Or you can click off of the save a project, and you can uh, um, save all kind of things. If you got markers, you can, or if you got regions, I cover this in the loop slicing video. But if you have different regions, different things sliced up, then you can select those regions and export them individually or you can as separate files as you can see here it's grayed out because I don't have any um, things selected um, but yeah you got different file formats you can do choose different channels different sample rates different um, bit rates which is good you can go all the way up to floating 32-bit um, float which is awesome and yeah you can save the audio straight to the iPad or you can export it to wherever you want to in the files app you know you don't have to be iCloud it can be audio share or any other thing that you want and uh, yeah if this video was helpful or useful you know give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down you know it's I guess it kinda helps me know whether this content was relevant to people who watched it or or not um, if you're into supporting content creators like myself and others we usually have a direct PayPal me link and a patreon account the links are in the description. Make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified when I make more videos. And if you have any video suggestions, you know, any apps on the iPad that you want to see me dive deeper into, you know, leave that in the comments below. Um, I do have an Instagram. It's the Audio Dabbler. I'll leave a link in that too. I'm trying to be more active on social media while this whole quarantine is um, is happening. And so yeah other than that i will uh stay safe and i'll talk to you guys later